Hi, so today I thought what we could do is make a journal, an art journal that has a padded cover like this one. And then we can put in our own pages. This one only has 10 double pages in it. So the whole thing is completely handmade and it's super, super easy to do. What I used was some quilting material, you know, just cotton. I have two bigger squares, two little squares. I used some batting. I'm gonna use four pieces, four little pieces that I cut. And I'll have the materials listed below. I'm going to use these uh, Artist Loft canvas panels. They're gonna make my front and back cover. They're gonna make my book very sturdy. These are six by eight inches. And then I also bought some mixed media paper. And I believe I bought everything from probably Michaels. I may have gotten this from Hobby Lobby, I don't know. Nah, maybe Michaels. But this is mixed media, so it accepts wet and dry media. And this is heavyweight paper, but it really wasn't super heavy. So, and I use this. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I need to do, obviously, is to open up my canvas. And I should have done that before, but I wanted to show you what the package looks like in case you decided that you want to make one of these too. I think you can probably get some canvas panels from Dollar Tree. I think they're probably five by seven though. So I'm going to use two of these. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fabric and I'm just going to cut it so that it's a little bit bigger than my square here. And I did not measure it. I just uh, took my fabric, you know, cut and tore to make it fit. So I did that for the front and for the back. Then I took my cover and I put it on top of my batting. I'll show you my batting. Uh, this is my big piece of batting. And I just took my cover, laid it right on top, and then I just cut around so that it would be approximately the same size that I want my cover to be which in this case is six by eight inches. If you're a whiz with a, a quilting cutter thing, rotary cutter, go for it. And I cut two of those for the front and two for the back. So I'll have four total. And then I'm using this glue fabric tack. And if you've never used this glue, it smells very strongly, dries quickly though. And I'm just going to lay a bead down Whoops. And I just want to lay my quilt batting, I guess, on top. And then I'm just going to put a little bit more glue down because I want to adhere the second piece of batting to it. And I'm not putting glue all over. Okay. And as you can see, it's not perfect, but it will be perfect when I'm done. So now I'm going to take one of my pieces and I'll just lay it over the top and then just turn it over like so. If you are a purist, when you do your crafting, you can cut it to exactly one inch bigger. So um, this is six by eight, so seven by nine. And uh, no, 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 eight by 11. And that'll give you an inch on each side. I just eyeballed it and didn't care. So now what I'm going to do is take my glue. I'm gonna stick a little bit in each corner. I'm trying a new uh, way with this one. I'm just gonna pull my corner 
straight there. Pull this corner straight there. The whole idea is to try to miter it a little bit. If you don't like this way, I'll show you a new technique. Well, it's not new, but I'll show you a different technique on the other side. And I'm just going to hold these down until they adhere. Notice also that when I put this down, I tried to kind of keep it in a straight line just to try to get the corners to miter better. And now I'm just going to add some glue to my fabric. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it over, just using my fingers. Don't worry about any little ratty threads that you have because you can cut those off. And I'm just going to hold that for a second and let it set up a little bit. So I cut off my little string here. And there it is. I'm going to turn it over. So I've done the short side. I've done one short side. Now I'm going to do the other short side. And I'm just adhering this a little bit more. Putting glue. And with this one, I'm going to just kind of pull it over, not super tight, but I do want to kind of give it a good pull over just so that it'll kind of give me some definition here. I don't think you can really see it, but it does. All right. Going to let those set up for just a minute. If you're worried about your glue setting up and, and everything slipping, you can use uh, little clamps. You can use clothespins or you can use these kind of clips that I have right here. And I think I'll just do that for right now. Just like that. Now I'm going to put a little bit of glue under this edge, a little bit of glue under that edge, fold those down kind of like a package, and then I'm going to put glue all over there and glue that in place. So almost like you're wrapping a really nice gift for somebody. I just lay my glue. You don't really have to use tons of glue. And I'm just going to fold this edge right over, keeping it as smooth as I can. And then I'm just going to put my clamps in place in this direction. And there I'm doing it with a clothespin. And I got glue on me. And now I'm going to do this side. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue under that edge. A little bit of glue under that edge. Just kind of fold it like a package. And then I'm just going to apply my glue. Another thing, too, if you're a purist, you wouldn't want to have um, the woven edge of the fabric. You'd want to cut that off. But I have the woven edge of the fabric on mine, and I am not really concerned about it. Another thing you can do with these, which is fun, is if you have the little metal corners, you can attach the metal corners to your book covers. I'm not going to do that. This is just for my daughter. It's a, just a little fun art journal for her. So it's not going to be 100% perfect. And then, of course, you can take it off and adjust it so that you get the look you like. I don't know if you can tell, but it's poking out a little bit there. I don't really care for that. So I'm just going to pull it over a little bit more and repin it in place. So I'm done with this one. I'm going to set it aside and let it dry. And now I'm going to show you the other way that you can do it. 
it starts exactly the same. You're going to take your board, take some glue, lay it down, and then take your batting, put it on top, do another little bit of glue. You know, you just kind of want them to stick together. And I am just doing a little bit of glue. It looks like it's a lot, but it's really not. And I'm going to put this on top, maybe this direction. Nope, don't like that direction, but that's what I'm going to do. Next, I'm going to take my fabric. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and use my scissors. And I'm going to miter the corners. And so I'm going to come out of leaving approximately an eighth of an inch from the edge. I'm going to cut diagonally here, leaving, I hope, an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more. I'm going to do that to these corners as well. This one will give me a much smoother corner. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue. You can either put it on your book or you can put it on your fabric. It doesn't really matter which. Pull it over. And then just like when you're going to make a covered book, you know, you use paper, you're gonna kind of fold that end in and then you're gonna fold it over like that. But first I need to do this side as well. Oops. Not good, I got glue on my pad and that's what I use to hold my knitting machine in place while I knit. So it doesn't swivel around. Okay, so I've got those down. And I'm going to put a wee bitty bit of glue right in the inside corner there and a wee bitty bit right there. Kind of hold that down. Kind of fold this in a little bit. Oh, and then I have to put glue on my edges. I really hope I didn't just give you a headshot. Here we go. And then I'm just going to fold these over. Adjusting as I go. And as you can see, this gives me a much cleaner edge and it looks, looks much nicer from the outside. So there's two ways to do it. There's the lazy way that I did it on the first one that I showed you that's a little easier, but you're gonna have edges that don't look quite as nice. Or you're gonna have to manipulate them quite a bit until you get them to look nice. And I'm just gonna take these clamps off because I want to use them for the other edge. Isn't that cute? I think it's cute. Okay, now I'm going to put my little clamps on. You may be worried about what am I gonna do with this edge? Well, I'm just gonna glue some paper there and make a very pretty end sheet, I think is what they're called. Okay, so I'm gonna come do this side and I'm gonna put a little bit of glue right in the corner here because I need to fold up my fabric and have it stick to something. And then I'm also going to lay some glue along the edge of my fabric and toward the board. So I'm going to remember kind of fold in on each edge. Just kind of folding in. This side worked really nicely. And then I'm going to flip this up and over and give it a slight tug so there's a little bit of resistance. 
or a snug fit. And I'm just going to put my clamps on this one. And I'm going to set this aside to dry because now what I need to do is I need to work on my pages. And when I work on my pages, I'm not going to use the fabric tab. I'm just going to use a regular white glue. So you can use any white glue that you happen to have. To on make here. the pages for my book, I'm going to use my mixed media paper, like I said. This measures nine and a half by 12. So I want my book to be six by eight. So I'm going to cut it eight inches this way, and then I'm going to leave it 12 inches that way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a sliver off of the 8 inch edge and a sliver off of the uh, 12 inch edge. And I'm going to do that 10 times because I'm going to make 10 double folded pages in this album. So I'm going to pull out 10 of these sheets and I'm going to cut them to just a shade less. If you want inches, you could do 7 and 7 eighths inches by 11 and 7 eighths inches. And then that way you would have a nice good, a nice fit into your book. So that's what we'll do. 7 and 7 eighths by 11 and 7 eighths. So I'm going to just cut off very little. All right, so I'm going to take my 10 pages. I'm going to cut them down. And I'll cut down my papers. I have 10 papers and they measure 7 and 7 eighths by 11 and 7 eighths. And now what I'm going to do I'm just going to take them one by one and I'm going to line up the edges and I'm just going to fold them in half. If you have a bone folder, you can use your bone folder to get a nice crease on it. It's a little hard for me to get a good crease on this pad, but I'm using that to try to stay in frame. So once again, I'm just going to take each of my 10 pages Line up the edges and top and bottoms as well. And I'm going to go ahead and fold that one in half. So I will make sure that I have everything folded and then I will come back and I will show you the next step. I have folded all my pieces of paper in half as you can see. So now what I'm going to do is glue them together. I am going to use the left as my spine so the left hand side will be my spine which means that the fold for each piece of paper is going to go on the left side okay my fold is on the left so i'm going to go ahead and lay some glue down on my paper and i'll only do this a couple times so you can watch and then you'll see that we do that for every piece of paper that we have. And I do kind of want my glue to be as close to the edges as I can get them without going over like I just did there. Okay. All right, so I'm going to take my second piece, make sure that my fold is nice and crisp and I'm going to line it up just exactly on top of that and so what's happening is two pages are getting glued together which is making my book have very thick pages that's what I want and I'm just going to smoosh it together like that and then see I have this page this page just like that I'm going to repeat the process. I'm just going to put glue close to the edges. I am a wild gluer. None of my glue gets close to the edges. I go over the edges. Oops, but I'm trying to be good. If you go over the edge of the spine, it's no big deal, really, because you're going to end up putting glue on that later anyway. And we're going to use fabric to cover it. It's going to be really pretty. All right, take my next piece, making sure that my fold is crisp. And my fold is to the left. And I'm just going to set it on top. 
I want to make sure that my pages line up. That my edges meet. And then I'm just going to press so that my glue does get in the fibers and adhere those pages nicely. And now we have another set of pages. I'm going to continue that for the whole book. I'll come back uh, when I'm done with the, the last page. And so you'll just have a collection of pages that are together. You do want to be as careful as you can to line up the tops and the bottoms. You want to get those as straight as you can. And once they're all glued together, I will most likely put a couple clips on them, binder clips, and then just leave them for the, the glue to set. And probably leave them for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Or so, so as you can see, I have glued my pages all together. And I just want to check them and make sure that they come apart. They are double pages. So far, so good. No stickage. Yep, they're fine. Okay, so now what I want to do is just because I want my spine to be a little straighter, I guess. I'm just going to add some clips along the spine area. You could put heavy books on this, whatever you want, and just let it dry. And that is what that looks like. So I'm going to let that dry. But in the meantime, just to let you know, I have cut another piece of fabric. And what I'm going to do with this is I want it to be just pretty much the same size as my book. So I'm going to just fold it up. It's about two and a half inches wide in case you're wondering. I'm just going to fold it up. I'm just going to press with my thumb a little hem. And then I'm going to come up to the top, turn it down. And if you're just a tad off, there's no worries. But see, I am not measuring. I don't really want to go over too much, though. So I think I'd rather be under than over. And I'm just going to pull that out. And then using my thumb, I'm going to just fold it over. That gives me a little press line. So now what I'm going to do is just take my fabric tack glue and I'm just going to tack it down. I am not looking for protection or perfection here. Everything is going to be hidden fairly well by the time we're done. So I've glued that end and I'm going to glue this end. While I was making it, I thought, you know, this would really make a nice little gift for someone. And also, if you do craft fairs, you could make art journals and sell them. And I bet you could probably command a pretty decent price for them, you know, provided you take your time with them and, and make them look nice. Okay, so I'm just going to leave this and let it dry. I'm going to leave my spine and let it dry. And then when we come back, we're going to assemble everything together. Okay, so I have taken my clamps off and now I'm going to cover my spine. So this is my uh, folded edges all together. So I'm going to take my fabric tack and I'm just going to put it where my pages come together. Now I don't have a nice flat spine this time. So don't worry if you don't. You'll just have a rolling spine. It'll be fine. It'll look great. All right, and then I'm just going to eyeball my fabric. I want to make sure that my chickens in this case are all pointing up. And I'm just going to lay it down In the middle and it doesn't have to be exact because you know who cares right so there it is 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it over and just glue it down because this is going to be covered. So just put a little bit of fabric tack around there. Oops, have a wild string. I'll just hide that in my glued edge. Fiber, right? Makes it stronger. Okay, I'll just glue my chickens there. I'll turn it over. Add some glue here. Where I used the most glue was along that spine edge that I wanted nice, good coverage for. Okay. So now I have my spine covered with my little chickies. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and clamp it. You don't have to clamp it. I just want to. I can't say it really does anything for it. It does hold it in place, I guess. So there is that. Okay, there we go. The next thing I have to do is I have to, if you look at this book, it has the end paper. So I need to find an end paper that I'm going to like with the chickens because I am going to use a piece on each side and I'm going to cut it probably seven and three quarters by five and three quarters. And that way I'll have a little bit of the fabric showing, but not a lot. So I'm going to try seven and three quarters by five and three quarters. I went looking through my paper stash and you would not believe it. I found the perfect paper. Check it out. It's chicken wire. Here's the other side of the paper. And I've had this paper for, oh gosh, I don't know, a whole bunch of years. Don't even ask. But this yellow doesn't look good with it. But the chicken wire is hilarious. I love it. So I'm going to use the chicken wire side for my um, pages. So now what I'm going to do is I want to adhere this page to this page. And I could use the fabric tack if I want. Or I could use regular glue. But I think I'm going to go ahead and use the fabric tack. So I have decided which cover I think is best for the front. I like this one better. This little dent from the, uh, oh, is from the clip I had in place. It kind of stuck to the glue. So be careful when you're using your glue that you don't put too much. But I can fix that too. All right, so I'm just going to do some glue right up the spine and then on the edges. Got some glue there that dried and looks ugly. All right, and I'm just going to put little bits up there. Okay. And I am going to take my book. Gosh, I really like it. It's so cute. Let me set for the back. And I think this one does look a little bit better. So I'm going to use this one for the front. And I'm just going to lay it on top. And I'm going to try to align my spine and my cover and my top and my bottom pages. And I'm just going to, sorry if my head's in the way, press down. Oh my gosh. This is going to be so cute. I can hardly stand it. All right, so this page is now glued to the front. And you're going, well, what about those pages? Very simple. What I'm going to do is once this dries, I'm just going to glue this right in place over it. And there will be a little tiny edge, but that's just fine with me. That's going to be so cute. And I'm not worried that my pages are kind of a vanilla cover, colored, and my um, chicken wire is not. It is a definite white. But that's fine because um, when my daughter uses the book for her artwork, she's going to change the color of all the pages anyway. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just going to glue on my back cover using my fabric tack. You do kind of want to get that glue right along the spine edge and the edges of your page. And then little bits in the middle. Ugh, this glue is so strong and I'm sure I'm probably poisoning myself because I'm not working in a well ventilated area. All right, I'm gonna just line it up, press it in place. Oh, I love this already. Now, my advice to you is to put something heavy on it and let it sit until the glue dries. You just want to make sure that you have everything in alignment. What I'll do to kind of cheat is I'm going to, well, my clips aren't going to fit on this one. They fit on my last one. So I'm going to find something heavy. I'm going to set it on top there. I'm going to let it dry. And then when everything's dry, we'll come back and we will glue in those end papers. Yeah, you do want to check and make sure that things aren't having a mind of their own and sticking together. If they are, just pull them apart, run your fingers along the edges and make sure that there's no glue. Oh my gosh, isn't that adorable? All right, I'm gonna leave it and I'll be back. We are ready to do our end papers. Now, you wouldn't have to do it at this point because this paper is glued on here and that makes an end paper. But I wanted to have the cute little um, chicken wire because it's just so stinking cute. I think she'll love it. So I'm just going to glue it right on top, making my glue come out to the edges. I'm also going to spread glue in the middle because I do not want to have any lifting of the edges of the paper. And my glue, it needs to be having a pin shoved through it, I think, because it's getting a little hard to squeeze it out. Goodness gracious. Okay, here we go. All right, and then I'll just dump some glue in here. When I glued the pages together, I didn't say this and I should have. Um, I like a glue that gives you some time to wiggle things around if they're out of place. Just makes it easier. Okay, I'm just going to lay this right over the top. And press it in place if you want to use your bone folder. Feel free. And I'm trying to squish the glue out to the edges as much as possible. And then I'm going to do the back page. And I'll glue this in place. And then I went through my stash and I had those book corners. I had mentioned that you could put book corners on these if you wanted. And I got some from AliExpress, and they're wide book corners because for this particular style, you need to have the wide ones. The narrow ones are just too narrow, and they would squish your book and make it not look very nice. So I'll show you those in just a second. Um, like I said, I did get them off of AliExpress. They weren't very expensive. I no longer buy from AliExpress because... Um, every time that I have bought things from them, the past six or seven or eight times, they tell me that the item's been delivered, but when I check, it's always been delivered to some address in New York, and I do not live in New York, and then they will not give me my money back, even though they made the mistake. So I no longer purchase things through AliExpress, which makes me very sad because I had some sellers that I really, really liked. All right, so I'm just squishing my glue. And there you go. Now, if you wanted to at this point, if you have some uneven pages, you can come back and take your scissors and you can fix that. 
but to me, my book looks just fine. So I just want to make sure once again that I can open my pages. And my pages are nice and thick because I remember I glued back to back. Here we go. All my pages work. And now these are the little brass. I don't know if they're real brass, but they're pretty things that I got off of AliExpress book in protectors corners book corners maybe and see I can put my finger in there so it is pretty wide so what I'm going to do is just slip it over the corner like that and then I'm going to take a pair of pliers and I'm going to squeeze it into place I have these pliers and I'm just going to give it a pinch and tighten that up. I suppose you could add some fabric tack glue on the inside but you really don't need to it's not necessary. Then I'm going to do the same thing down on this corner and I'm going to Give it a press to tighten up the edges. And then I also want to add them onto the back for continuity. And then my very last edge piece or edge protector. I really don't know what these are called. If you do know what they're called, please put it in the comments below. Another thing I'd like you to put in the comments below is if you were to sell these in a craft fair, what do you think a fair price would be for these? There you go. There you have it. Here's the chicken art journaling album thingy. I don't know. We should come up with a better name for it. But it's wonderful. It's good for all your mixed media projects. And here is how the spine looks. It looks very nice. You can see that it's uh, the papers are sandwiched between. And that looks adorable. And someplace in my stash, I have a glass chicken bead, a lamp bead. And I think if I can find it, I will sew it onto the cover somewhere just because it's so adorable. And then I'll give it to my daughter. I'm going to make one more of these albums and I will post it in the picture. Actually, you've probably already seen it because I bet I use it for the cover picture. Anyway, let me know what you think and if you want to try this, it is quick, easy, and fun. Thanks!